President Nolan, distinguished faculty, proud parents, special guests, and graduates of the class of 2013. I am honored to have been asked to deliver the commencement address here at my alma mater where I spent five years from 1977 to 1981. I arrived in Johnson City full of hope, ambition, and left with two important things. First, I walked away from this place with a business degree that's enabled me to navigate my way through the world. The other takeaway was confidence. I left here confident that this university had done its job in preparing me to face the obstacles and challenges that life would toss my way. You see, I'm the oldest of eight children. Both my parents were teachers. And so the prospect of me of going to college without some type of financial aid was completely out of the question. I was a linebacker playing high school football in Daytona Beach, Florida. When I broke my arm in five places my senior year during the second game, my injury knocked me out uh, off of a lot of recruiting lists. But East Tennessee State University gave me a chance. They gave me a chance, and with that, I am truly grateful. The lessons that I learned and lived here at ETSU helped shape me, the man, the husband, the father, and the head coach that I've become. I couldn't be prouder of my association with this outstanding university and this surrounding community. But let me tell you, being the head coach of an NFL team, it's challenging, it's hectic, it's chaotic, it's intense. But I can tell you this, I'm passionate about my players, about the game, and about winning. That's what we do at the Falcons. But let me tell you, I'm sure the NFL is not on your mind today, but I hope your parents are. I sincerely hope that at some point this weekend, if you haven't already done it, you look them in the eyes, you hold them close, and you say thank you for their sacrifices. As hard as you've worked to get to this day, they've worked even harder. So parents, if your kids haven't said it yet, let me just say it for them. Thank you. Thank you for your patience. Thank you for your commitment. And thank you for being strong and tough when you needed to be. The piece of paper that each son and daughter will leave this building with boldly confirms that you, the parents, you were right. Congratulations to all the parents. And I think it'd be very appropriate that we all give the parents a hand. I want to talk to you today about the wonderful possibilities that lie ahead along with some of the challenges that you're going to face in the days and the years ahead. And thinking about what advice I might share with you today, and believe me, this is a lot tougher than standing up in front of the football team and talking about we're going to go out and play the quarter hard and we're going to make these adjustments at halftime and go. But I was able to come up with what I think are five things, five things that I'm going to talk about that are a set of guiding principles that have helped me find my way even when the going got tough. And I hope you'll find them helpful. Here they are. First, be bold. Number two, adapt to change. Number three, cultivate your relationships. Number four, treat everyone with dignity and respect. And number five, maybe the most important, is give back to your community. Let me tell you what I mean by each one of these. I'm going to take a couple of minutes and talk about each one of these values. Robert Frost, the poet, said, freedom lies in being bold. Be bold, even when the circumstance fill you with self-doubt. That's not always easy to do. I think we've all learned that as we go through life. Each time you take a risk, you're exposing yourself to the possibility of success or failure. 
Let me amplify that by what I'm, by what I'm talking about. I, at the close of the 2000 NFL season, I was the defensive coordinator in Jacksonville Jaguars. We had a good team. We qualified for the playoffs two of the past three seasons, and we were seemingly on our way to some great things. In January of 2008, I received a call from the Atlanta Falcons, who asked, would I be interested in interviewing for the head coaching position for that team? My first thought, the Atlanta Falcons? Wasn't this the team whose coach had just quit and gone back to college after 13 games, left in the middle of the season, and whose quarterback was on his way to federal prison? <clears throat> Who would want that seemingly impossible task to turn that mess around? The short answer to that question, I did. Which speaks to my first point. If you want to be great, You've got to take some chances and be bold. Five years after answering that bell or answering that call, the Falcons are now viewed as a model franchise. We've won more games since 2008 than any other NFC team. We've won two NFC division uh, titles. None of these things would have happened and would have been possible if I refused to step out of my comfort zone. The second principle talks about the ability to adapt to change. The landscape that we live in, the landscape that you're coming into is constantly changing. That's especially true of the world that you enter now, today. Technology, innovation, push the pace of change in every occupation. And yes, this is one of the toughest economic periods of our country. That's why you professors here have strived to turn you into problem solvers with nimble minds. The National Research Council recently published a report that said up to 60%, now listen to this, 60% of today's workforce might be displaced from their jobs by the year 2030 as computers meet or exceed human capabilities. But at the same time, new jobs are emerging. Our President Obama's Council on Economic Advisors says some of the fastest growing jobs over the next decade have yet to be identified. Opportunities will come from everywhere if you're a person who's open to the world, you're flexible, you're constantly learning, and you're adapting. That's why it's critically important to be able to improvise and adjust. I have a saying with my football team, I and A guys, you always have to improvise and adjust. The New York Times columnist Thomas Friedman wrote a book called The World is Flat. Many of you have probably read it. In the book, Friedman talks about the skill sets of American workers and the need for them to evolve continuously. As graduates, you're not competing with the class of 2013 across the United States. You're competing with the best young minds around the globe. I've got some figures that I want to talk to you about. The Institute of International Education says that, oh, there's over six, 765,000 students that are international students in the United States. That's an increase of 6%. What does that say, ladies and gentlemen? That says this. That's the positive side of global competition. you got to like to compete. The class of 2013, you have a greater opportunity than any generation in the history of our country to connect and collaborate with people from every culture. Think of it as a positive. That's not only exciting, but I believe this. I'm convinced that's the formula for global understanding, sharing of different ideas, and the seeds that someday for, for a more peaceful and less violent world. The third principle of, of, for success deals with cultivating your relationships. Take care of your relationships. In everything you do, take time to listen to others. Leadership expert Stephen Covey said, and I 
believe in this wholeheartedly. Seek first to understand, then be understood. Think about that. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. Taking care of your relationships means taking care of yourself. I hope you, you'll do the work that you're passionate about, work that's worthy of your life. And working hard is going to be essential to be successful. But you've got to strive to live a balanced life. Physically, mentally, and spiritually. In the years ahead, you'll be glad you took time away from your work to focus on yourself, on your family, and on your friends. I love my work. I'm a football coach. I love my players. I love the guys on my coaching staff. I love watching the athleticism of guys like Matt Ryan, Tony Gonzalez, Roddy White, Julio Jones. I also like coaching the lesser guys with the lesser abilities, watching them grow not only as players, but as young men who marry, have families, and go on to responsible and productive citizens in their post-NFL careers. But nothing, absolutely nothing, means more than family. I'm married to arguably the most patient woman on the world. It's tough being the wife of an NFL coach with the long hours that it takes to prepare, to go through game planning for games on Sundays, along with the off-season commitments in the spring months. There is no off-season in the NFL. I just call it the non-game playing season. We have the draft, right? For all you fans that love the draft, we have the combine. The season goes on and on forever. So every chance I get, I try to spend quality time with my wife, Julie, and my 13-year-old daughter, Logan. I don't always hit the bullseye, but I do my best work to work my business calendar around my family calendar. And that's some advice that I would give all of you. In a rush, make sure that you take time for your family. So value your relationships. Live a balanced life. Make time for those you love. The fourth guiding principle is about relationships too. In all relationships, you should strive to treat everyone with dignity and respect. Good people and good ideas are everywhere. As a nation and as individuals, we can't afford to overlook anyone. Everyone matters. And realize this, that you can learn from everyone you meet. Hopefully you've learned that your ability to work as part of a team can be every bit as important as your individual talents. We're all part of teams. That's true in the professional world just as it is on the football field. No matter what you do for a living, you'll always be a part of a team. Teams win. People in society win when we value everyone's talents and we focus on a common goal. One of the major lessons for me from the last two political seasons is that regardless of who we voted for, regardless of who we are or what we do, we need to get back together as a nation. Our differences might possibly be our greatest strengths. The freedoms that this country offers has made us the most creative, entrepreneurial country in the world. We couldn't succeed in the future if we continue to close our minds to different points of view. So my advice to you is to engage people who see the world differently than you do. The fifth and final guiding principle is very important to me. Give back and support your community. When I was growing up, we didn't have a whole lot, but my mother and father taught me that we were called to be our brother's keeper. To demonstrate that, they shared their time and their limited dollars with the people who had even less than we did. It's our responsibility to give back to those who are less fortunate than we are. The late Dr. Martin Luther King said, Life's most persistent and urgent question is, what are we doing for others? I'm going to say that again. 
Life's most persistent and urgent question is what are we doing for others? Give back. It's our duty. We celebrate today the completion of your academic journey for most of us. This is largely, believe, I believe, a time of joy, pride, gratitude, and relief. It's one of the most exciting times to be alive in all of human, human history. It's also a time exploding with opportunity, innovation, service, and global possibilities. The late Stephen Jobs, or Steve Jobs, often talked to his employees about finding their passion in life, in work, and in love. Now listen to what Stephen Jobs would tell his employees. You can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backwards. So you have to trust that the dots will somehow connect in your future. You have to trust in something, your gut, your destiny, your life, karma, whatever. Because believing that the dots will connect down the road will give you the confidence to follow your heart. Even when it leads you off that well-worn path. And that will make the difference. Jobs continue to say this, sometimes life is going to hit you in the head with a brick. But you can't lose faith. You've got to find what you love. That is true of your work as it is true of your lovers. Your work is going to fill a large part of your life. And the only way to be truly satisfied is to do what you believe is great work. And the only way to do great work is to love what you do. If you haven't found it, keep looking. Don't settle. The class of 2013, yours is a generation that has matriculated and come of age in a time when the information on-ramp and the information overload that we get looks like Monday morning at Grand Central Station in New York City. Your generation is bombarded daily with negative news, predictions of bleak and sluggish job markets, and one screaming with negative headlines like the events three weeks ago surrounding the conclusion of the Boston Marathon. The talking on heads on TV will lead you to believe your future is one that is clouded with uncertainty, fear, and doubt. My job today is to tell you this, don't believe it. It's the fourth quarter and the clock is, in, is not in our favor. The good guys are down by six with less than three minutes to play. But you're prepared to win because this university has prepared you to think. It's prepared, prepared you to re research solutions, turn negative obstacles into yesterday's news. Your generation reminds me of our Falcons quarterback, Matt Ryan, who's 22 come from behind victories in the fourth quarter or overtime since 2008 are the most of any quarterback in the NFL. Your generation will overcome and achieve in the face of insurmountable odds. Because as tough as things have been, I'm convinced you're tougher. I've seen your passion, I've seen your service. I see it every day at Falcon headquarters. The work ethic, the passion, and the innovative spirit that young people of your generation that we hire every, every year. I've heard your voice amplified by the creativity and the digital fluency that us of the older generations can barely comprehend. It's amazing. I've seen your generation eager and patient even to step into the rushing waters of history and change its course. And that defiant, can-do spirit is what runs through the veins of American history. It's the lifeblood of your progress. And it is that spirit we need your generation to embrace and to rekindle right now. 
So the question is not whether things will get better, they always do. The question is not whether we've got the solutions to our challenges, we've had them within our grasp for quite some time. We know, for example, that this country would be better off if more Americans were able to get the kind of education that you guys have received here at East Tennessee State University. If more students across the nation could get the hands-on, skill-specific training in smaller classroom settings that you receive, our economy would recover at a much quicker rate. We know these things to be true. We know that our challenges are eminently solvable. The question is whether together we can muster the will in our own lives and in our common institutions to bring out the changes that we need. And I'm convinced that your generation possesses the will to meet all of these challenges with intelligent solutions that work. So as I go to my seat, I want to leave you with one final thought. Take action, class of 2013, and go to work. Take some time to celebrate the accomplishments of your graduation today with those that you love, but sometime in the very near future, get to work. A couple of parents probably agree with that. Every, every story that you've ever connected with, every leader that you've ever admired, everything that you've ever accomplished is the result of taking action. You have a choice. You can either be a passive victim of circumstance or you can be the active hero of your own life. You're a buccaneer, so I know that you will choose the latter. Congratulations, and I wish you all, all much success. Thank you.